back to more sewing with Michelle. This week, oh my gosh, it's so tacky. Can you believe it? We're going to be talking about adhesives and I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favorite adhesives for when I sew and quilt and what I use them for and why. So I'm going to get down and we're going to get tacky with some of my favorite adhesives today on More Sewing with Michelle. It's really good that sometimes things are so tacky. And um, I absolutely rely on adhesives when I sew um, for many different types of quilting or embroidery or basic sewing. And over the years, I have decided, you know, it's kind of my, my handful that are my go-tos. And the reasons that they are my go-tos is because I have tried, oh my gosh, probably every adhesive out there. And I know that's probably not true, but it feels like it sometimes. Um, you, you see something new come out and you, you, you grab it, you test it, and then, you know, sometimes it becomes your new favorite adhesive. And other times you never pick up that adhesive again. And that could be a waste of money. So I wanna talk to you today. And it's gonna, um, I'm gonna go over in depth what adhesives I use and why. And I'm only talking about, you know, specific things. I'm not gonna be going into um, what type of double-sided or stabilizers for embroidery. Let's think glues, um, that type of thing. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Now, some of the reasons why you may use adhesives, um, when I first started quilting, I used to baste my quilt with those curved um, quilting pins. And I did it for years. And then one day, um, I'll give a shout out to Robin Stanford, the manager at the Moore's Huntington Beach store where I started working. And um, she said, don't you spray baste? And I went, no, I don't. And I have always been an asthmatic in my adult life. So I always try to um, steer clear of things that have sprays and um, she goes, well, try this. I tried it, and let's just say I was hooked ever since. So thank you, Robin, um, for opening my eyes as far as adhesives. Now, I will say not all spray adhesives are the same. I have gone through a series of different ones, and I have come down to one that I use religiously, and that is the 505 spray. I love this stuff and it makes my basting of my quilts go really quick. Um, if I'm doing a really, really large quilt, it's just easy to spray it. And I will admit, um, my husband who's retired downstairs, he helps me base my quilts um, for the most part. And we clear off my um, dining table, we um, roll out the batting, we put the backing on first and then we um, spray everything down and then we also do the top. So he's very helpful when it comes to basting my quilts and I love him for that. But um, basting a quilt can be very difficult and you always wanna make sure that you get everything smoothed out and everything is adhered and it will then sew when you're sewing it together at the same time. So it's one of those things that can really make or break a quilt. If you take you know, all your time and make a fabulous quilt top. And then when you go to baste it um, and, and do the quilting process on your quilt and it just comes out wrong, I can tell you, because I've been there, um, it is a huge bummer and it ruins you know the whole quilt. And I have a couple quilts that have puckers and pleats on the back and I can tell you which ones they are from when I first started to quilt. So 505 is my answer and um, it does not affect me with my asthma and um, it is a spray and I'm going to show you a demo on all of these a little bit later but it's a spray it will not stain your fabrics and it's a temporary adhesive so I don't know I've never tested it because once I'm done with my quilts as you know the first thing I do is wash my quilts so I'm assuming that once I throw it in the wash, it probably comes out in the wash like most things. So once again, I love my 505 spray. 
Now the next one that I'm going to talk about is our Quilter Select Free Fuse. And I use this too for the same exact reasons that I use 505. So depending upon what I'm doing, I will grab either one of these to base my quilt. Now the Free Fuse is a newer thing to my, my arsenal as far as um, adhesives. And it's a powder granules. And I love it because I can literally put those granules exactly where I want and then they will stay. It has a shaker top and like I said, I will be doing a little demo on all of the adhesives in just a little bit. But this is semi-permanent and that means it's not going to come out in the wash. It's going to be there for a little while. And um, I will be showing you why I love this. Um, it is definitely one of those things that I use for applique. Um, also, if I'm, um, you know, gluing something down and I, I can put a bead of these granules, it's perfect. And with this one, you do have to use an iron to set it. With the spray base, the 505, you do not need an iron. It's once it's sprayed on there and you attach the fabrics, you're good to go. This one, you will need an iron to set it. So that right there also gives me a little bit of limitations for when I use the free fuse, depending upon what I'm working on. Now, I do want to say real quickly, because I'm giving pros and cons, let me go back to the 505 real quick. Warning, you do want to be careful where you spray your 505. Because it is a spray, there is an overspray that will um, get a little bit up in the air. So I like to directionalize my spray when I'm spraying so it's going in an angle and it's not hitting a lot of other areas. Keep in mind, I don't really recommend that you do it near your sewing machines. You do not want to get any of the overspray from your 505 onto the mechanical parts of your sewing machine. And my dining table, um, every once in a while we clean it up, but I can feel sometimes the, um, the residue from the overspray of the 505 on it. So that's the perfect place to do it, some place where it's not going to affect um, your machine or anything mechanical. So that's the one um, thing. And it's not a drawback. You just got to be careful when you're using your 505. Now, let me talk about the next one, and it's Roxanne's. Now, I've been using Roxanne's for many years, too, and I love it. Now, Roxanne's is perfect. Um, I use it mostly when I'm using my um, wool fabrics, um, when I'm doing an applique or doing anything with the wool projects that I use. But I've also used it to secure a zipper flap down or binding in a tough to um, bind area. I love it. It's got a very nice precision tool, a precision tip, not a tool, precision tip, and it also has a cap. And keep in mind, you want to make sure that you keep this cap at all times because if you don't, it's just like those old Elmer's glues that you used. It will get dried up and then it's, you know, problematic. So you want to make sure it's a liquid. You can feel it. It's kind of like Elmer's glue inside the tube here. But I love it and I use it all the time. Now, um, it's great for, like I said, wool or felt or cotton fabrics. Um, it has the precision tip and the cap, and it is water soluble and it goes on clear. And I will show you that a little bit later. But I love my Roxanne's. Like I said, I use it every single time um, I make something with wool. So I love it. Now, we have our fabric fusion pin. Now, this thing is pretty cool because it's permanent. So all of the other ones I'm going to show you are not permanent. They're either semi-permanent or they wash out. This little guy is perfect for things that are very difficult um, to adhere um, or to sew over, and you want to make sure that they're secure. So being that it's a permanent marker, it has a nice tip, once again, where you can get it exactly where you want it to be. But there's time, say you're making, um, I remember when I was younger and I used to make my Halloween outfits and the one thing that came to mind was um, when I was, went as a 50s and I had my poodle skirt, this is perfect for crafting um, Halloween items because it will stay permanent and it'll secure everything you need um, to stay in place so you don't always have to sew things. It does need to dry for two to four hours and you can wash it after 48. So 
if you wanted to make a clothing, although I would probably use my sewing machine, you technically could use this wonderful fabric fusion pen um, to do your seams and it would be washable. So I love this. Another thing that um, I know that I used it on with a friend was making um, a really fast, simple curtain balance and um, it held. So I love this. Um, once again, this is the fabric fusion pen permanent. And then the last thing I've talked about, I don't know how many times, um, I love my Quilter Select um, glue stick here and I use it all the time. And, you know, proof, proof is in the pudding, so to speak. How many times have I showed it on more sewing with Michelle? It is so convenient and um, it is um, a handheld glue stick. It's just like those regular glue sticks. It does have a tint, but it will dry clear. So I love that about it. And it's one of those things that I use lots of times to keep things in place until I can do my stitching. I use it on binding. You know, I've used it on lots of different things, um, but I love it. And those are the five items that I'm going over today. And like I said, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. There, If I need an adhesive, there's always one that I go to. And I have other ones downstairs, but these are kind of like, you know, my go-tos. They're my favorite, and um, I use them constantly. And I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many times I start to get about halfway down on my Roxanne's, and I got to order it right away because I don't ever want to be without it. That's how much I love this. And um, my 505, I buy a case full to make sure that I have it. The free fuse is great. You can buy refills of it and that makes it perfect too but it goes a long long ways and like i said um the fabric glue pen has a refill this is the only one um where you know it's limited to this but i love this and i don't use a lot of it because of the type of sewing i do i have no problems breaking out my sewing machines and making things permanent but there are times when you maybe want something to be permanent and you don't want to sew on your sewing machine Maybe it's a patch on um, your child's Girl Scout uniform or your Boy Scout uniform, but this is just going to be your best friend for areas and places that you want to have something securely put on, and it's just convenient. So those are the five that I have for you today, and I'm going to go on to a demo to show you exactly what they look like when you use them. I'm sure you know what to do by now, but... If this is your first More Sewing with Michelle, I want you to understand where you can go to purchase the wonderful adhesives I have for you today. You can simply go to mores-sew.com and then you're gonna click on the More Sewing with Michelle landing page, which will bring up all of the items. Another option that you have is in the video description, you can click on the link and that'll take you to the More Sewing with Michelle landing page. Either way, we'll get you to be able to purchase the wonderful adhesives I have for you today on It's So Tacky. The first one is our 505 spray. Love it. And then we have the Free Fuse powder. We also have the Quilter Select glue pin. We have Roxanne's Glue It. And then we also have the Fabric Fusion Pin. Any and all of these, I highly recommend. Um, like I said, they're my favorites and I use them all the time. So I know you'll love them just as much as I do. Um, keep in mind on the Free Fuse and also the Quilter Select Glue Pin, we will have the refills on the website too on my landing page. So with that said, don't forget to check them out, pick up one of these adhesives for you to use on your sewing projects today. So we're really going to get tacky now. I'm going to do a demo, show you just how these adhesives work and what they look like. So the first one I want to talk about is the 505 spray. And basically you've got the lid. And like I said, when I use this spray, I directionalize where I'm spraying it at. I just don't spray openly because just like any spray from a can, you do get that overspray. So you'll see here, let me pull this over. You wanna shake it up, make sure that everything's really good and you're just gonna give a blast. So you can see that it is a liquid. I'll show you up close there. And that's gonna be pretty, 
pretty secure there. So now it's going to stay adhesed to those two fabrics. And once again, when I'm doing my quilt basting, I really smooth things out to make sure that they're nice and secure whenever I use them. So I, once again, um, love my 505 spray so much that um, several times for Christmas, um, when my husband asks me what I want, I say, Ooh, I'll take another case of 505, please. So love it and use it all the time. Now, the next one that I'm going to show you, since we're talking about quilt basting, we're going to go ahead and go over the free fuse. And on the close-up here, you'll see that um, it's got the shaker top here. And um, you simply, when you get it, you're going to open up this top, pour the granules in, and then um, use it. And it, it has a long shelf life. You don't need to worry about it going bad because it's a granule. Um, and basically, you can simply shake it wherever you want. Now, a little goes a long way with um, the free fuse. So, like I said before, I like that I can push it around and kind of, I use my fingernails and kind of directionalize where I want it to be. And you can definitely, you know, it's kind of like playing with salt. You can push it to where you need it to be. And it's super convenient. You will need your iron to heat set it so that it secures everything together. It works perfectly with batting. I love it. And I use it all the time on smaller quilted items, um, on large quilts, like if I'm doing a king size, queen size, it's easier for the 505. But it all depends upon the fabrics, what I'm doing, um, if it's embroidery, how thick it is. There's lots of factors that go into if I use my free fuse or my 505. But those are the two things that I do to baste every quilt that I make. So love them both. And the next thing I'm going to talk about, let me move this down a little bit, my little sample thing, is the Roxanne's glue. And like I said, I love to work with wool. And I've made quilts with wool. I love to make pillows and little decorative accents. And if you've worked with wool before, it's not something that's very easily or um, double-sided adhesive friendly. So what I do is I pin and I use my Roxanne's glue. Now, as I stated before, you really want to make sure you don't lose this cap because I've done it and I have searched everywhere high and low and I think that thing grew feet and ran away from me. But um, you want to make sure that you keep it covered the tip when you're not in use because it will dry out and then, you know, it's useless. So we don't want that. We want to be able to get years and years and miles and miles of use with our Roxanne. So the way that it works, if you look on the demo, you can simply squeeze it out. And I love that it has this precision tip because then you can basically, like if you were doing um, glitter or something, you could write your name with it, um, but it's a precision tip. Love that about it. So you can see here, let me see if I can do an upside down heart. There you go. Um, super convenient and easy to use. Once again, when I use my Roxanne's, it's usually on wool or felt. You can use it on cotton and other things. I have every once in a while, if I'm sewing something and there's a little piece that's sticking up, I will put just a little dibby, dibby, dibby dab of the Roxanne's. And then if you simply put it on top, you can secure your fabric. So love it use it all the time and like i said all of these ones if i get low if i get halfway but i i have to say especially on my roxanne's because i can see as it goes down once it starts to get low i start to like oh my gosh i need to get more now that's how much i love roxanne's so the next thing is the quilter select glue pin and on the little demo thing here as i said it is tinted yellow now the great thing about that, um, I was a paper crafter for many years, and you'll understand why they tint things, because if you're working on white paper and you have a clear or a white glue, you want to see where that glue is. So they started tinting um, the glue sticks so that we as paper crafters and scrapbookers would know where the adhesive goes. And it works the same way with fabrics. So the fact that it's tinted this yellow but dries clear is totally beneficial. So if you're working with white fabrics, you're gonna be able to see exactly where that line is. And because it is 
this, let me get it up close here. You can see that it's like this neon um, greenish yellow. Um, it sticks out on most fabrics. I love it and I use it all the time. Um, you can simply move it up and down just like a pin and then you simply slide it across and you'll see that it comes out and it'll grip. And like I said, that line will stay that color until it's dry and then it will be clear. So it's super helpful. And I use it all the time um, for really hard to areas for binding. I like to add um, a nice layer of this and put it down. Now I will use this before I use the rock sand for that because the rock sand um, is more liquidy. And so if you put that down for a binding or something like that, you're going to have to hold it for a long period of time. Not with this glue stick. Um, remember what I said, it's so tacky. This is really tacky glue. So I can um, put this line down where I want it to be and then squish the fabric on top and it's going to stay because it has that thickness to it and the tackiness and it's, it's a thicker product. It's more um, conducive to holding things right away. Whereas the rock sands, like I said, um, it takes a little bit to dry. And I will also, just so you know, sometimes when I use the rock sands, um, especially for my wool things, I'll put the dab of glue on and then I will use my little mini iron and kind of secure it so that it dries faster. And that's totally um, something that you can do with the rock sands. So with that said, that's the glue pin. And then we have the fabric fusion pin. And like I said, this is our only permanent one and I absolutely love it. Um, you can see it's got, I'm going to hold it here, it's got that precision tip and when you squeeze it out, the liquid comes out. It's more of like a gel fit and I want you also to notice the cap. The cap, there's a certain way that you want to make sure that you screw it in correctly. So that's our fabric fusion. We've got all of our glues here on my black sheet. So we have the 505 that has stuck, we have the powder that isn't stuck yet because I don't have my iron up here. We have the rock sands that I drew with and it's got that precision tip, wonderful for wool. We have the quilter select glue pin, love that too. And then also this wonderful permanent fabric fusion pin. So lots of different things you can do with them. What I have done is only the tip of the iceberg for most gluing adhesive things. I know you probably have some of these that are your favorites and you're like, but wait, Michelle, I do this with it too. And like I said, these are only the things that I do. There's always so many more things that you can do with adhesives. But I wanted to share my favorite adhesives and why I use them and what I use them for. And like I said, I recommend every single one of these. So what do you think? It's been so tacky. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to show you real quick before we finish this out how, if you look closely, you can see everything has dried clear and everything's nice and secure. We've got this isn't falling off. We have this other thing. So I love these glues. They work. They're awesome. And like I said, I highly recommend them for you. So be it either the Fabric Fusion Pen, the Quilter Select Glue Pen, we have Rock Sands. We have Quilter Select Free Fuse and then the 505. Love them all. I know you will too. And I hope you've enjoyed this week where we've been very tacky today talking about adhesives. Have a fabulous day and I look forward to seeing you back here on more Sewing with Michelle. And until next Monday, bye-bye.